So a uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation. It's my great pleasure to be back. So today's title, um, I have think many times, and I and I think the the title it should be, you don't know what you don't know. It's something that I would like to share with you. Yeah, this is what I have faced throughout the years in my entrepreneurial journey. I'm the founder and CEO of Twenty Four Angels Home Care, and also Miti Queen Senior Residences in Jamdohat. So let's start with uh, a little bit about myself, uh, starting from my childhood. So uh, that was me on the left. Uh, I think that that was about five to six years old. Uh, I, I was a troublemaker in school and I chased out from the class many times by the teachers. Yeah, because I find it very difficult to follow rules in the school. Uh, and I was enrolled into a a uh, Chinese school where discipline is so so strict. Yeah, if you forgot to bring uh, textbooks or you uh, miss out homeworks, then you will get uh, punishment. So it's really uh, tough for me. But I think that's what made my my childhood interesting. And we, I, I'm also trained by my grandma to be prudent in uh, in spending. I try hard it in study and understand the need to excel academically uh, because um, I I was uh, raised by my grandma and I live with my grandma since young. So uh, all the values and uh, life principles uh, is being influenced by my grandma. So in this photo, I was this, uh, this guy, the one at the, at the center. So this marks the end of my six years study in this uh, uh, highly disciplined environment. So 23 years, I was never uh, um, um, out from uh, Penang. So I spent 23 years of my youth in, 20, uh, in Penang Island. I graduated from Chongling High School, which is uh, an elite school in my hometown in year 2010. And after graduated from the high school with my SPM grades, I got a scholarship to study in uh, Ta College, Penang. And after three years, I graduated from a diploma. So after diploma, I was looking for um, some opportunities. I'm also the scholarship recipient of the Star Education Fund. Um, and that's how I was being chosen to be the one to, to uh, take the oath during the orientation day. So that, this photo was in College Tunggua Draman. And this photo is my first time uh, come to Kuala Lumpur in Petaling Jaya, the, the star HQ. So after my graduation from diploma program, um, I faced difficulty to uh, fund my degree studies. So I have applied to many scholarship foundations, uh, for example, like Petronas, Kazana, uh, JPA, uh, Astro. So there are a lot of scholarship foundations that I have applied. And I'm so lucky to be shortlisted as the recipient of Tunggu Adaraman Foundation uh, scholarship holder. So we we are the Tunku Scholar uh, as, as given by the foundation. So this was, uh, this was the ex-higher education minister, Dr. Sri Liju Yusuf. So that, that was a time when we went to the Tunku Adaramas Memorial Center in Kuala Lumpur, and we had our uh, events there. So after enrolled into university, uh, I spent a lot of time organizing activities and join uh, societies. I was quite active because um, apart from studying, I also feel it's a need to improve my inter interpersonal skills and also leadership exposure. So I have been organizing a lot of trips to uh, MNCs and also colleges. So these events has uh, have made me to, to, to who I am now. So um, I will say my university life is quite exciting 
and very fulfilling because um, the faculty of engineering given me a lot of opportunity to uh, expose myself. Um, they they chosen me to represent uh, uh, MMU to uh, Japan and Korea to uh, do some exchange. So this photo was with a uh, university in Tokyo, and this photo was in a smart city in Songdo, South Korea. So all the programs are uh, fully sponsored. And I was so glad that I'm being uh, chosen, yeah, because uh, I think that that time I was one of the top students and they they trusted me to to give a good impression to their uh, foreign partners. So that's how I, I was being chosen. So again, uh, Huawei Seeds for the Future program is a really, really impressive program and our memory in Beijing and Shenzhen uh, is still with me at, until today. It's very memorable, unforgettable. Uh, it's also a sponsored program to, to visit uh, Huawei's HQ in Shenzhen, where they expose us to the telecommunication technology yeah, in, in China. So that's how much uh, the faculty has uh, supported me. So finally, I'm graduated in 2018. So up before graduation, uh, in fact, I have uh, thought that what will be my destiny and what is going to happen after graduate, right? So in fact, before I graduated, I had the idea of uh, starting a home care services, uh, primarily due to my grandmom's incident in Penang. Uh, she, she had to use nursing home services but uh, there are not so many good quality nursing homes in Penang. And I saw the opportunity and I started with a home care services online. So I brought the idea and pitched to uh, EDC, Entrepreneur Development Center. Uh, and they trusted me and given me the first grant to test out the idea, to test out the idea and then validate the idea. So after the formation of the company, I again bring the pitch deck to an uh, angel investor in Sunway. So that's where they invested in the first ideation. Yeah, after the company formed, uh, I quickly recruited two co-founders. Uh, one of the co-founders is my ex-lecturer and the other co-founder is someone that I met in a conference. Yeah, but unfortunately, probably, uh, probably they are not entrepreneurial enough or they, they, they are just uh, not so persevered as, as I am. So they, they decided to, left, uh, to, to leave after two months. So this is a very um, memorable photos where I pitch in front of, I think about 200 audiences in Mice, Mice Rigamangan, where I am I'm representing MMU in the Petaningan Usahawan Innovasi. That, that time, in fact, I, I didn't prepare much because I was busy with my business and with, uh, while MMU sent me to this competition, I just uh, go to the competition and then pitch. Yeah. And while, while I saw many teams come with a lot of members, I'm the only one who pitched for my own company. I don't have any members with me. Yeah. And then this photo, uh, I was um enrolled into Selengo accelerator accelerator program and this is also a a very life-changing uh, moment for me because i have met a lot uh very experienced mentors um, that's how i i got the idea to to start a uh, nursing home and i managed to get a uh, subsequent uh, investors right so this this moment i i spent a lot of time in my work and business and i don't have much social life yeah all my all my mind is just about to grow the business and uh, make my company you know uh, stronger so finally i secured angel investment in 2018 so i'm one of the the founders here so among all these founders the active companies remaining uh, is me and the guy beside me, 
the guy beside me, uh, Tinesh, is really doing super, superbly well. Um, he is the founder of La Pasa. You can Google what is La Pasa. La Pasa raised close to 10 million today. Uh, they are very entrepreneurial and expand aggressively. Yeah. So I'm very happy for him. We graduated from the same batch of the SLT program. So after talking about myself, uh, I would like to introduce a bit about what my company is doing. So we are solving two problems here. With the aging population, uh, it's a global phenomenon affecting uh, every part of the world. So by 2050, you will have 2.1 billion of population age 60s and above. So this is quite a, a significant number. So that's where nursing home, retirement homes, or home care services is so vital in developed countries. Uh, and Malaysia being a developing country, soon becoming a developed country, we will need more of these facilities yeah, to be ready for the years to come. The second problem we are solving, we can see that the family size is getting smaller, right? Compared to last time. Last time you might have five to six or 10 siblings yeah, in the, in the old times, but now we will prefer lesser children. Yeah, probably because of a higher education and also a increase in the living of standards. So uh, we don't have much children to look after the aging parents anymore. So that's where nursing homes play a role in looking after the uh, aging parents. So company background, uh, Minty Green established in March 2018 after, uh, after one year, uh, 24 angels uh, established. So this is the second company that I established. So uh, 25 30 base per home, our first branch in Jira, second in Sumai Long, third branch in Damansara. And the fourth branch is coming end of the year in um, uh, PJ Sungai Way. It's a PJ Icon City. Our core services, uh, we have daycare, overnight care, long-term care, home care, acupuncture, physiotherapy, and Tuina. So that's the charges we, we are charging since year 2018. Yeah. And 24 Angels Core Services is still doing well until today, since 2017. The best seller is in-house caregiver, where we send the individualized uh, care services to the patients at their home. Earlier this year, we launched mental health services because we identified uh, many people face mental challenges during this COVID-19 pandemic. And my judgment was right that a lot of people face uh, mental issues, really a lot. So they, they call up our clinical psychologists and then they, they speak to our clinical psychologists about their problems. So, um, so this, this segment is doing extremely well in this, uh, in, in this time. Mobility services for OKU, Vista Lounge and TCM Clinic. But TCM Clinic wasn't allowed to open, so it's not not so good as we expected. So we are waiting for the MCO to be lifted, right? So our target customers, the total market size, it will be approximately 4.46 million age 60 years and above uh, last year. So this year, I think close to 5 million, but if we just take 5% out of the 4 million age 60 years above, there are about 200,000 clients. So 4,000 is the charges we are charging averagely per client. So that equal to 800 million of market size in Malaysia alone. And our target customers, they are post-surgery patients, immobile patients, cancer, stroke, dementia, Alzheimer. The new technology introduction. So since our inception, we, we understand the, the problems nursing homes facing and we have identified a, a, a few technology that will be helpful to, um, to ensure operational excellence in our centers, such as bed saw uh, monitoring system, the wearable for all our residents, and also a system to, um, to monitor the health vital signs of all our patients, like the uh, temperature, oxygen level, glucose. So it's all being passed to the cloud platform. We want to digitize the digitalize the whole process. 
motion sensors, infrared back axis uh, detectors, and facial recognition system. This is to uh, reduce the, the falling cases in our uh, nursing homes or if there are four cases happen, our caregivers can quickly go and uh, uh, take the necessary mitigation steps. Our value proposition is we um, introduce TCM intervention to our uh, clients other than uh, Western medicine treatment. So this is an additional uh, intervention by the uh, TCM physicians. So our core team members, uh, so our team is growing bigger and bigger now because with bigger team only we can grow to a, a, a more outlets and more locations. So growing, growing team is our primary uh, uh, objective this year. So just to show some of our packages, our partners, I really want to thank all these partners because when I started, uh, I have knocked on the doors of so many hospitals and uh, medical equipment companies. So these are the few companies that uh, trusted me and they, they know I'm going to make it happen. So they, they established a partnership with me until today. Photos of the branches. So in fact, all the designs and the, the setup was uh, was organized by me and also my uh, management team. So we, we were quite experienced in setting up uh, um, senior care homes to, to fit the requirements of the, the, the government. So these are the mental health clinic that is doing very well. But now, because of COVID, that we have to move all the consultations online. Yeah, some of them call in, uh, some of them use Google Meet or Zoom to consult with our clinical psychologists. The physiotherapy center is too bad that a physio center cannot open because uh, it's a really uh, a session that need close contacts between the therapists and the patients. We even set up a central kitchen to supply food uh, to all our outlets. So we, we don't need to have so many central kitchen, right? So this central kitchen is supply food and we deliver to all the outlets. And um, just now after my, my presentation in the uh, Ministry of Education Award, the Entrepreneurial Award, uh, I was uh, selected as a second runner up. So that was quite a, a surprise to me because I never expect that I will get something from this competition. I just uh, attend and after the pitching, I, or, uh, I went back home to, to do my work already. So I, I was just uh, didn't expect that. And this article was published in October 2018 is a free publicity by Oriental Daily. They got to know us from a friend and they came to our center to interview me. Uh, uh, what are the, the differences between home care, old folks home and nursing homes? So I, I contributed my, my opinions and thoughts. Uh, University of Technology Malaysia also invited me to share my uh, startup journey with their students last year. So Tunggu Adrama Foundation is a really great scholarship organization that they, um, they supported me all the way from degree. And now I'm doing my master in Monash University. And again, they, they sponsored my postgraduate study. So this is definitely the best uh, scholarship I have ever uh, uh, obtained. I'm their notable alumni being selected uh, in my own uh, niche area which is entrepreneurship so i want to thank mmu uh, foe also for uh, selecting me to be their alumni hall of fame uh, probably the the youngest one to be featured in their website after uh, i think this was featured last year so yeah i have done my uh, sharing so 
Yeah, it's only 230. Uh, Putri, I have done my uh, sharing. Okay. Oh. We can we can open the floor for uh, Q and A lah. Yeah, I mean, uh, when they ask a question, I can elaborate more on my uh, journey because it's gonna be a lot. But in this slides, it's a summary. Yeah. Somebody asked a question. Uh, Rajesh, maybe you wanna uh, ask uh, post that question. Okay, uh, someone said here, sorry if I got the wrong person, but was he the alumni that attended the May intake orientation? <laughs> May intake orientation? Uh, was it you? Yeah, la, you were there, right? Is it the, the offline sharing in MPH? Yeah, you were in MPH, then you talked to a smaller group of people, then a ah. lot of them. But Su Hong, I'm not sure like Su Hong is there or Su Hong online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was there. That that time was before the the MCO. Yeah. It's an offline sharing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh Jimmy, can I ask you a question since we haven't got any questions so far? Yeah, yeah. Um actually how you manage to kickstart your business, huh? Because uh, it involves a lot of cost, manpower, your overhead should be high as well, right? Yes, yes. So yes. how did you manage uh, initially? um okay it's very tough to start a business where you don't have funding from uh, your family and and so on so before i graduated i got to know the the establishment of edc right entrepreneur development center i think primarily i'm always a person who look out for opportunity yeah and uh I wouldn't say all my friends, they, they are not hungry for opportunity, but you'll be surprised that all my classmates or friends, they, they don't really care what is EDC, you know, they don't care what is the function or how EDC can help them, right? Even though they, they have some business ideas. Uh, but for me, when that setup uh, came through, so I quickly uh, write in my pitch deck, and I sent to EDC, uh, that time was led by Prof. Kamaru Zaman and uh, everything was still very new. The, the whole system is still very new and I also don't know how to do pitch deck. So I, I approached them and I talked to them about this idea and I was communicated by them there was a grant coming out. So I said, why not I use the grant to test out the idea first, right? After you test out only, you know this is going to work or not. So I go and pitch to EDC uh, and they supported my idea. So that's how the first, the first grant being secured. But of course that grant wasn't enough for me to set up a company and hire uh, staff. It's really tough. So that time was a one-man company, right? Was a one-man company. I, I literally need to do everything myself uh, from marketing, sales, uh, operation, uh, Thinking, uh, picking up phone calls. So it's really, really tough. It's super tough that uh, none of my classmates saw me in the class. Sometimes I have to absent from the class because I was too busy. Um, but that was a sacrifice I was ready to make. I was ready to make that time to ensure the, the idea comes through. So with the EDC support, I go on to write my slides to outsiders. Outsiders means there are angel investors, private equity or venture capital funds outside. So I, I said, why not send this pitch deck to them and probably they might be interested because um, as long as you try, there might be some chances for you to get it, right? So don't, don't just uh, uh, fix yourself to um, a family or friends fund. If, in you fact, never try, you never know, right? Yeah, you, you, you have to keep on trying. I, I send to many, many angel investors in Kang Valley, really a lot. Superly, I mean, uh, it, it's a superb experience uh, that I got turned down by many also. 
But lastly, uh, WTF and Nexia, they they saw the passion in me, uh, so they they just uh, invested. Yeah. So with that money is is enough for me to set up a Sanyam Berhad. Because set up set up a Sanyam Berhad also need quite a few a few thousand ringgit one. Not easy. A few thousand ringgit to uh, set up company and then hire company secretary, and then you you need to do shareholders agreement. You need legal legal people to uh, draft agreement for you. So with, without that that angel investment, how could I possibly uh, how could I possibly uh, start start the company? It's not possible, right? Yeah, true. So um, I think I've answered your question. How I managed to start from a student to being an entrepreneur. So that that was my dedication and perseverance. I think. So uh, I, I I managed to achieve it. Yeah, it's actually um, something we should applaud. Lah. Okay, we have another question here. Shalswi yep. Alif. Sorry to interrupt. I assume your company target customer is for a specific race. If no, what is your company strategies to attract customer from other races maybe? For example, like Muslim will really take a serious issue on the food maybe? Mm. Okay. Uh, our services here, Primarily daycare, home care, and long-term care, you will have uh, different races. Yeah. And then physiotherapy also. Yeah. Because long-term care, daycare, home care is very general, right? We we don't target a specific race. Yeah. Uh, you, you will surprise that a lot of, uh, a lot of, I would say, Bumi Putra elites, they, they use our home care services. Uh, probably they, they think this price is uh, very reasonable. So we have a lot of premium customers uh, using our home care services. Uh. So it's, it's not just one race. And then uh, acupuncture is well accepted also by other races. I think they they understand what is acupuncture and they believe the, the effectiveness. But again, in moving forward, we are looking at creating another segment of course we will still using minky green brand but probably we will uh rebrand a bit probably into minty green uh, uh i don't have idea now but it will be targeted at a different segments of customers right but for now we already have uh, customers from different races subscribe to our services here yeah so customer segment it will need a uh, probably different uh, uh, branding, rebranding of our our uh, uh, services, so that that will attract different segments of customers. Yeah, I understand. Okay, uh, Hafi Sudan asked, "How did you feel when your co-founders left you?" Did okay, you great question. Great question. So this. This incident uh, happened just after I I uh, received the grant from EDC just for a few months. I I had a lot of uh, plans to make it successful and make it work, but just that my co-founders, uh, I would say they are not that entrepreneurial as me. Uh, is but they are not wrong. They are not wrong because it's a matter of choice, right? It's a matter of choice. You want to be entrepreneur or you don't want to be. So there's no right or wrong. But they decided to leave and uh, yeah, back to their own work workplace. So I I was very sad at that time. But I decided to uh, work on this work work on this idea myself alone. So one of the co-founder was an ex-lecturer and I just don't know that he he can't really commit the time to, to work out the business model, the business plan that we have uh, charted out, right? And uh, so he continued with his career until today, which is okay, uh, nothing wrong. And the other co-founder is my former classmate in FOE. So he keep on saying, uh, Jimmy, uh, how how can your company pay me a, a salary of uh, three thousand ringgit after I graduated? Then I said, 
my company is still new. Can we just try three to six months first and see how it work, work out and at least give, give our choice a chance? Yeah, but uh, he looked at the short term. He looked at the short term. Uh, so he decided to just join a company and, and take the, the 3000 salary. Lah. Yeah, so nothing wrong, right? But I said that six months is for us to try out and maybe if we succeed, we might get even more than your current 3000 that the employer offer you. So uh, I have done whatever I could to make him stay, but he still decided to go for the uh, stable job as he, as he uh, uh, decided. So I can't do much. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was the, the lonely founder uh in the company alone i go to pitching i go to uh, seek for investment all by myself yeah. in fact many people said oh probably your your idea is not going to work you know so that's why all your co-founders left and uh you are alone you don't have team members how can you make it yeah so that that, that was a painful experience and the uh, the worst time ever. Uh, it, it, very challenging at the same time. Very, very challenging. At that time, I think Prof K witnessed the whole journey of me suffering as the, uh, the, the sole owner of the total thing. Uh. Wow. Okay. Um, some, okay. A. Woonro said, uh, okay, I uh, saw your job advertisement in Riceport. What's your expectation towards digital marketing roles? Oh, yeah, yeah. Our HR posted the digital marketing uh, uh, post in uh, Job Street Rice Bowl, I guess. Uh, our digital marketing, I had experience in digital marketing because 2018, uh, I learned digital marketing through online and all the SEOs, SEM is all by myself. If you look at the website and the blogs that, that we have done, it's all by me. So now it's time for us to uh, get someone that we can delegate the digital marketing things uh, work for them to continue to do blogs, uh, keyword targeting, and, and so on. But that, that guy must have certain experience uh, knowing how to do keyword marketing, keyword research, and also meta text and etc. Yeah. Uh, if you are interested, you, you can drop the your resume or, or email to my HR. So they, they have the, the standard process to shortlist, right? But digital marketing skills isn't that hard, actually. Yeah, no, nobody teach me. Uh, I learn it all through online. All the resources is readily, readily available. Okay, now, uh, people are not is asking, how did you manage uh, how did you organize and manage a company on your own? Did you have a mentor or were you just learning along the way? Okay. Okay. Good. Um, after I, okay. I, I had, I had quite, quite a few mentors actually, uh, throughout my journey. So when, when I was in university, uh, Prof Kamaru Zaman, uh, was my mentor. Yeah. He, uh, he beautified my pitch deck. And also he discussed with me uh, what what is the amount that investors might be interested because when when you teach to investors they want to know how much you are raising and then how much money you are allocating right uh, from the money that you raise so with all that uh, that's how I can bring my pitch deck to outsiders and then pitch to them yeah and I and I pitch many times to uh, Prof K as well before I I go to outside. Yeah. So Prof K was my mentor in, uh, at the very early stage, uh, I would say. So after I got the annual investment from next year at WTF, uh, my mentor is uh, Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen is the president of Malaysia business angel network now. Yeah. If, if you Google Malaysia business angel network is a group of angel investors. They, they always on the lookout to invest in young startups. So Mr. Allen and uh, Cash from WTF, 
uh, both of them guided me after I secured the angel investment. So it was a very tough journey, but um, I was lucky that they guided me on how to be a non-entrepreneur, to become somebody who can uh, you know, lead a company and grow the company, scale up the company. It will not be a one or two days things. Since 2018 until now, they are still in communicating uh, in reg regular uh, follow up with me every month. Yeah, before MCO, we always go out on um, lunch or, 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 or coffee just to check, check with our progress and how do I scale and grow the company. So yes, I have two mentors after I secure angel investment. And then when I set up my nursing homes, uh, this branch, I got another uh, mentor, which is in the medical supplies industry. Yeah. So this mentor was very experienced in medical industry and he advised me in various uh, areas of medical, uh, medical related knowledge. But of course, if you look at how I got to know all these mentors, you need to be uh, a person who always reach out to others and then you, you have quite good interpersonal skills so that there will be mentors who are willing to guide you. Right? So uh, think out of the box and um, always on the lookout for uh, uh, Samaritans to, to, to help you if you want to do business. Yeah, thank you. Okay, well, your mentors are really, wow, well, uh, congrats to you for having three mentors at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, another question from Ya Shen Tong. What advice and encourage what would you like to give to students who intend to start up their own business? Oh, okay, okay. okay. All right. Um, if you want to start a business when um, directly after you graduate or um, after you graduate or when you you are still in your final year, uh, you I would say in university you have the the time for you to learn and brush up your leadership and interpersonal skills. Yeah, like organizing events and, and uh, so on. Um, so with, with, with that, you get more exposure and only you, you will know uh, what do you want, right? I mean, that, that question, if it can be more specific, like uh, how do you want to start? Uh, you, you need to find your area of interest, yeah? You need to find your area of interest and, and passion. If not, you will very easily uh, uh, give up along the way because business is like that. Probably six months to one year or two years, you, you won't see a very significant ROI, you know. You, you will uh, being get paid much lesser than your friends who go out and, and secure a stable job. And they, they might still asking you how much you are making per month. Is your company still around? Yeah, you will face with all these stressful questions. Yeah. Um, so you need to find your area of passion and you, you work on it hard. But of course, there is a strategic uh, approach yeah, for you to, to do, uh, to want to start business. Like you see, I, I pitched to EDC and also I, I attended many competitions. So why you attend competitions is because you need judges and different opinions to, uh, uh, to improve your business plan. You need to know, uh, is your business plan uh, going to work or not? But you can't keep on saying that your business will work without third party's perspective. So I got a lot of feedback from uh, judges and also mentors. They will put me a lot of questions and I start to think myself, okay, with this question, how can I improve my business plan? So when your business plan keep on improving, with all these third parties uh, perspective, your business plan is will be bulletproof. You will have a bulletproof business plan that is so strong 
that investors know you are ready. Your business model is ready to, to scale and they will be interested put, to put in money to you. So there's no shortcut. If you want to start your business without money, uh, uh, I mean, without family support and you want uh, outside investors to put money in you, you need to sharpen your business plan. Yeah, I think EDC can help you if you, uh, uh, Dr. Ong might, might be the right person for you to look for if uh, you want to make your pitch deck better and look for outside investors. Yeah, And then participate in more hackathons and competition. Yeah, So let them to vet, uh, validate your idea. I hope I answered your question. How you got the... Uh, Jimmy, how did you get the competitions right where did you get the leads from to which competitions to participate and so on oh in fact there are so many competitions all the while you know i mean since my my years in 2017 there are a lot of pertandingan innovasi or, or hackathon it happened so i was very uh, uh crazy that i joined all you know i joined all literally I, I joined all i mean i have failed in many competitions as well but i also won some prizes in competitions so I, I pitched to a lot of judges. So that's how I got all the uh, uh, ideas on how to improve. Uh, EDC sent to me the invitation to all these competitions. And also I, I searched myself in Facebook because uh, I, I did mention that I'm a person who always look out for opportunity. So I won't wait for opportunity to come. I will go out and seek opportunity myself. So I think this mindset is is so important to for entrepreneur if you want to succeed you can't wait for opportunity to come never you must go out and look for opportunity yeah thank you wow oh, that's a good one yeah you cannot wait for them to come to you you have to search mm. okay uh have you <laughs> mr albert here he asked have you failed before if yes how uh how would you overcome the failure if no, how prepared are you to face failure? Thanks. Oh, I think I fail many times. <laughs> uh, I fail many, many times. Uh, too bad the photo is not here, but okay. I, I organize a lot of uh, events in MMU. So the, the, the biggest event in MMU that, that time uh, was the mascot conference where I didn't pull it off nicely, you know. Uh, my leadership skill was still very, I would say very, uh, uh, very immature that I I can't lead the whole team to to pull off a very good conference. So the, the turnout of the event was extremely poor um, and all the sponsors also very unhappy. Yeah, so that, that was my biggest, I would say my, my biggest failure in uh, university. So that, that whole year, I, I did not go out on uh, social events anymore because I'm afraid that my friend will ask me, hey, what happened to your event? Uh, it, it seems very, very uh, poor turnout. And I, I literally have, uh, I feel embarrassed, uh, I would say. I feel embarrassed that I, that I uh, didn't manage the conference properly. Yeah, but I'm lucky that I'm still a student that time. So sponsors decided to forgive me. They, they, they say, okay, you are still a young man. Um, you still have bright future, but treat this event as a stepping stone, you know, as a stepping stone for you to move forward. Yeah. Uh, so that, that gave me a very huge lesson. Uh, yeah, to, to pull off an event and to, to lead such a big, big team to achieve a goal is really, really, uh, it's very difficult. Yeah, so that, that was my failure in uh, university. And uh, the second failure is I became a real estate agent. Huh? Maybe you, you can look my my slide here. I before I venture into nursing and rehab, I actually work as insurance agent and real estate agent. Uh, before I found my interest in the senior care, I I was influenced by my friend, a good friend of mine, to to try out the insurance industry and uh, property industry. 
Yeah. Because I was so lost. I didn't know what I want to do after graduation. And I feel that I, I lost the interest to, to become an engineer when I when I did my internship, you know, in the factory and consulting firm. So I said that that's not going to be the life that I want to uh uh to to enter after graduation. So I just try out insurance and real estate. Um, insurance, it was hard for me to close a deal because I was a bit pushy uh, when when I selling policy to uh, out to the friends. Yeah. So when you want to sell insurance, the lesson that I learned is not to become too pushy. You really need to just speak uh, with your friends, review their policy and then take the thing smoothly, yeah? So that people will not afraid of you and then uh, you scared away your your client. So after two months or three months, then I decided to to uh, to give up insurance agent job because I, I can't manage to secure a single client. Then I go into real estate. Uh, so when, when I entered into real estate uh, industry, the first project that I got is the Nilai property near uh, Inti College in Nilai. So there is an apartment there and my my group leader asked us to to do a roadshow in NSK Putra Lama. Yeah, so I, I spent the whole week there in the shopping mall to uh, to sell the property and I, and I absent from the class for one week because I, I thought Maybe with, with this one week spent in the mall, I can uh, close one, two cases. That will bring me a few thousand ringgit after I close the sale. But selling a property is so difficult. I, I gotta tell you, it's superly, uh, it's really, really tough that people uh, uh, just walk away and they, they don't want to take your, your brochure. And the project that we are selling is so far away, you know, it's so far away from city, it's at Life. So when the people heard of me lie, they said, no, 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 we, we live here. We don't want to invest or live in Eli. It's too far away. So the, the whole week I spent my petrol car park fees without anything returned. So after one month, I said, okay, uh, uh, my, my friend name, uh, Keith, Keith, I'm very sorry. I, I spent a lot on all the expenses. I don't get anything in return. So I want to stop already. I will stop. So I went back to, to university to study and I suddenly found my interest in the uh, uh, senior care industry after my grandma need the nursing service in Penang. So that's, that's the only time that I went into uh, nursing and rehab, you know, after so many years. Yeah. Sorry, so can we like actually say that uh, it's your grandma who inspired you to actually set up this senior care services? Yes, yes, yes. If without the uh, the experience, my personal experience with my grandma, I wouldn't be uh, stepped into this industry. Yeah, because there's no no encounter in life for you to uh, to enter this industry unless your family members or your loved one uh, need this service and you saw the opportunity. You must have really loved her a lot. Yeah, 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 because I uh, I live with her for uh, 22 years in Penang. So yes, these are my failures and I managed to overcome it and I, I never give up to uh, keep on trying. Okay, that's good. There's another question here from Shansui Alif. Does this pandemic affect your company? since maybe a lot of people work from home now and they will take care of their parents by themselves. If oh. yes, how do you overcome it? Okay, okay. Um, I would say um, our business nature is our residents still stay with us during this pandemic, right? They, they are still with us, um, but just that we don't allow uh, visitors for this for this whole year because we don't want any close contact or risk of infection to our clients. So we actually screen our new admissions very thoroughly. We, we ask the new patients to, uh, to do the COVID test. So after with the COVID test report uh, negative, then we isolate them for 10 days. 
to observe any uh, signs of COVID symptom. So with that only, we will uh, admit the new patients, right? We will meet the new patients. So of course, with a lot of uh, process being introduced to mitigate the risk of COVID, uh, definitely we lose some of the clients. We lose some of the new clients. But the best thing of this business is our residents, 90%, they are still uh, uh, with us. It's unlike other business where you rely on the outpatient, right? Like, like, like hospital specialist clinic, they, they rely on outpatient. So during this pandemic, they are badly hit because uh, lesser people come out to, to see doctor or lesser people go to hospital. Yeah. So uh, we are lucky that the minimal impact to our to our business. Yeah. So we, we just hope that uh, MCO lifted and everything back to normal, then we can uh, operate as usual. Okay, that's good. Yeah, ninety percent retention is impressive. Yes, Su Hong, thank you. Okay, there's another question I I want to ask you as well. You see, like um, your patients, your your in-house patients. Normally, what's the ratio like uh, to your staffs? Ah, uh, for our staff to patient ratio, from what we uh we have done since twenty eighteen, we have to follow the the rules of the JKM, eh? JKM is Kabakan Kabajikan. So it's one to five. One to five ratio. For all kinds of uh, sicknesses? Uh, one to five is the general one, but for bedridden or highly yes. dependent patients that you need uh, extra care. Yes, uh, so at extra care, we, we charge slightly more because we need more uh, more attention, uh, like like fully bed reader is 4,005 because they need a lot of attention, like uh, changing diapers every three hours, uh, checking their diapers, or uh, give tube feeding every three hours. And also we need to help them to, to, uh, to do bed bath. So of course, more attention, you need more manpower. So we charge higher, yes. Okay, uh, then each, how many centers you have now at the moment? Uh, now we have three. We now we have three. Uh, but end of this year, we want to add one more in uh, BJ Icon City. Yeah. Wow. So all these uh, centers, they have you. You provide all the services equally same, or some are specialty centers. Uh, we we provide all these services. We provide all these services, but just that the. The largest setup will be Sungai Long one. The Sungai Long one, we, we took five shops and we combined into one uh, outlet. Yeah, because we need huge spaces to put in the official center and a central kitchen, visitor lounge, and uh, 30, 38 beds. So that is the largest facility in uh, Sungai Long. Okay, this is another question I actually wanted to ask and someone is already asking. Shazri Alif, can you elaborate more on the smart wearable devices? And uh, Siho also asked about the security devices. Okay. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess those, are, those asking, they are engineering students or IT students, is it? I, I, I'm not sure. Okay, technology is something every company should look into. Like um, you look at the hospitals nowadays, they are implementing a lot of uh, uh, technology to make the, the system smoother, to increase their operational excellence. So for nursing homes, for us to raise the bar, to increase the standards of care, we need all this technology to make our care services uh, higher quality. So for motion sensors, uh, this is something that we have we have seen in uh, Hong Kong nursing homes. Uh, they install this in every toilet, yeah, because elderly people they they tend to fall down in the toilet a lot. So with this, at least we will be notified by the sensors uh, when somebody had a fall in the toilet. Yeah, we will, we, we will give the first, the, 
the immediate rescue to the patient. Yeah, let's say somebody fall. So this is so important. Uh, bed exit detectors. Of course, all this technology is by third party, yeah, because we do not want to uh, create the technology ourselves because we are a care service pro provider. Yeah, so it's not not viable for us to create technology ourselves. So we all implement the party technologies. The bed exit detectors, it can detect the patients who leave their bed. Yeah. Uh, because once they leave their bed, our nurse will get notified. Uh, somebody just left the bed and quickly go and see uh, what happened. It's either they, they fall down from the bed after turning or they, they left the bed uh, and, and, and walk to somewhere. Yeah, and most of them, they, they don't have a uh, uh, walking, I mean, they have difficulty in walking, you know. So sometimes they, they walk a few steps, they might fall. So this detector is also important. Facial recognition. With this facial recognition system, uh, patients who left the building, left our facilities, we will get notified. Yeah. Uh, there, there were times when patients left the building and we have to uh, go outside and, and uh, call the patient to back to our center. So this is what we have learned uh, throughout the years, the, the lessons learned. The wearable technology, we, we bought this wearable from a uh, China supplier because every patient with this wearable, we can monitor their vital signs uh, on a uh, timely basis. It's a life. It's a life. Uh, uh, it's a life. Uh, I would say we can see the temperature, the heartbeat, everything live. So this is so important to, to have wearable in all patients. Uh, this system I'm currently developing with FOE. Yeah, this plan. We drafted out this plan and uh, we, we want to make all these vital sign measurement uh, connected to the cloud. Yeah, because when we have more outlets, let's say four, five, ten outlets in few years to come, we may have problem to uh, record all these uh, results manually. So we want to move everything online. So with the uh, computer system in our headquarters, our headquarters can collect all the information. Meaning to say all your patient's records and all everything is in the cloud. You yes, yes, yes. All yes. the three uh, centers can access it. Yeah, yeah, we are developing that because now we are still uh, doing manually. So manually, you have problems of keeping. Yeah? You, you, you need to have a storeroom and uh, a lot of files to, to do the documentation. So we, we don't see that uh, sustainable in the near future. We want everything within a click away, where we just go to the computer and click the patient's name and we want to see the files, we can click and print it. Okay, we have a question here from Ms. Putri. Just raise a hand. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy uh, I just wanted to ask. Uh, I have two questions, actually. Um, uh, number one, I remember when you pitched to... Uh, I wasn't there. I was not uh, with EDC when you were there uh, pitching to EDC. Uh, but uh, I watched uh, again your your pitch deck to Mohi to the ministry. I remember when you pitched, it was on uh, something that is slightly different, uh, although it's still on elderly care. Uh, maybe you want to share. Um, did you pivot, or um, is it something, uh, or you did not, or maybe you 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 focus on something slightly different or uh, what made you do the what made you change or what made you do the changes second uh, secondly uh you told us that you have a number of uh, investors right coming in into your company so yeah. what do you have to give in return <laughs> hmm. is there is there you know do you have to sell your soul to these investors or uh, you know uh, yeah, maybe maybe you want to share with the students, with the participants here. Okay, um, when I pitched the, the idea to uh, EDC, so that time, when before Angel's Home Care is, uh, is aspired to be the platform where we connect the caregivers, nurses 
to the patients using this app. Yeah, so that was the initial idea. But to build a platform, actually, it's not as easy as we think. If you want to build a platform, you need a really huge cash from an investor where uh, you need at least a few million, really, a few million to uh, give uh, free service to the caregivers and the patients. Because if you want to ask your user of the app to pay money to you to, to get something, it's, it's going to be tough. You see how Grab started? They started by uh, giving uh, a very good subsidy to the drivers so that drivers can use the app. Right? And uh, Grab also allow the, the customers to pay lesser fees to the, to the uh, taxi driver. When you use the conventional taxi, you might cost more than using Grab. So actually, Grab is not making much money. Uh, uh, um, I think that that time now I'm not sure, but that time at the at the starting point, they burn a lot of cash, so that they have uh, more users coming up to the platform. So platform is not as easy as we thought. Yeah, you need a huge chunk of money to make it a huge hit. So yeah. what's your turning point when you decided that, you know what, it's not going to happen. This is going to take years or a lot of money for me to build this. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in this program, Selengo Accelerator Program, I, uh, I met a very good mentor. The mentor is some, it, he is a professor. Yeah? He's a professor in uh, digital marketing. And I, I asked him, I had this problem to scale this business model, right? Because there's no money for me to burn, to acquire users. Yeah, to acquire users, you need a lot of money. And you don't make money for your company uh, uh, for a very long time. So that, that mentor said, why not you pivot a bit to do something which is can give you uh, uh, money for, uh, for the time being because your company is going to run out of cash very soon. Yeah, so you must quickly go to pick up the low hanging fruit first. So that's how I, I uh, realized nursing home is something that uh, you can see a, a very quick return and the market is already there. You don't need to burn so much money to acquire users. The market is already uh, demanding this service so much. So I quickly go and uh, talk to some investors that I met and I said, uh, look, I want to build a nursing homes and I have great confidence it's going to be a huge success. And they, they buy into the idea and that's how we uh, started. But 24 Angels Home Care is still doing okay. Yeah, but the growth is not going to be as huge as nursing home as we have, uh, we have understand until today. Yeah, if you if you type home care KL in Google, uh, you might see twenty four angels in the top three or top four ranking. Yeah, we are a brand that is already well known in Klang Valley, but just that the growth is not as high as nursing homes. So, this hey, so what is the difference between twenty four uh, angel and also Minty Green? Minty Green is we set up a a facility for them to uh, to come right. Twenty four angels if we send caregivers to their house, so it's different. Okay, all right. Ah, so okay. it's a different way around. This is coming to our center. Yeah, the way around. All right, so maybe you want to share on WTF, the investment by WTF and also MVEN. Uh, WTF and Nexia, okay, they, of course, when people trust you, they invest in you, of course, they're hoping that one day you will get listed or you will get a bigger venture capital to buy the shares so that they can uh, exit or a gain in the uh, they have they can have capital gain. So they they of course they they, they want to see you scale up uh, faster. Yeah. So of course this is the the aim that that they are they are looking at. It's either IPO or trade sale. Trade sale means selling to other VCs or PE or IPO too. So that means WTF holds certain portion of shares in your company? Yeah, of course, of course. They invest in you, of course, they will uh, take some share, right? Okay. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Mm, okay. Any more questions?
Yeah, there's another question here. Do your invest by Shazui Alif? Do your investor really supportive or they just give the fund for their CSR purposes, maybe? <laughs> oh, uh, when you look for investors, uh, I would advise that you look for investors who who are not too fussy, but at the same time, when you need them, they are just within calls away. Yeah, so that is more important. You wouldn't want to have investors where every week call you and ask you, hey, how your business doing? Uh? How your business doing, right? So it's very, very uh, headache. But next year at the VTF, they invested in a lot of company. Uh, so they, they don't have time to really uh, bother you. But when you need them, you can uh, schedule appointment with them, consult them, getting their advice. And they have a lot of connections to the corporates or uh, uh, VCs and PEs. Yeah. So if you look at, if you, if you want to look for uh, a strategic investors, that, that investors must, must be somebody who, who can click with you well and who trusted in your ability and your decision uh, making, right? Although sometimes he might not agreeable with your um, way of doing things, but again, you as a founder, you must uh, learn when to say no and um, uh, how to make it work. Yeah, because you are the founder, you chart your company uh, uh, destiny, right? Mentor is just giving advice based on their past experience. Until you prove them wrong, you are still right. So you, you, you have nothing wrong if you don't follow what they say. But again, um, a founder grow along with uh, mistakes, grow with mistakes and lessons learned. Yeah. Okay, that's a good advice. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Ong has uh, raised his hand. Hi, Jimmy. So I think uh, quite a number of questions, uh, 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 answer posted uh, very inspiring journey uh, but i am really amazed with um uh, you know a young young man okay for me you are young man uh, for them you might be an uncle <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm an uncle already please <laughs> yeah so um uh, uh it, it's like really i'm really amazed with like what you say okay you make up with so many people at the age of 20 something um what actually what actually uh, encourage you to talk to so many people you know even today when i need to meet some investor i might still feel nervous and so on but but you know at a way younger age then you have approaches so many people talk to so many people asking for investment and etc so maybe you can share some uh tips or secrets or maybe how you actually feel at that point of time when you know that you have to meet them and etc with the juniors here oh uh i think i as you mentioned you will get nervous i think everyone will will be nervous when they uh meet up with uh investors and, and so on uh i i have pitched to so many people to the extent that i don't feel nervous anymore you know that's really uh that's really crazy i i i practice a lot so practice makes perfect, uh, I would say. It's very important. I have pitched to so many people until I, I don't feel nervous in, in front of people anymore. Even though uh, they are very huge investors, um, uh, they are what, uh, Dato or Tan Sri, I, I don't really uh, look at them as a Dato or Tan Sri. Uh, so I, I just pitch to them. I, I, I tell them my vision and, and so on. So there is no, uh, not much secret actually you really practice a lot and you keep on trying. Um, and then I I train my presentation skills since university. So that's why for all of, all of you here in university, you don't waste your time in the class, uh, don't waste your time in the degree study because that's the time for you to really practice your uh, presentation skills, leadership skills and so on. Uh, so don't don't waste the time, you know. I I practice presentation skills and uh, uh, speech and giving speech in the conferences and uh, meetings. 
I actually started all from organizing events. So slowly, I, I moved up to uh, organize events and going to pitching. It's all step by step approach. Huh? Yes. So there's uh, not much secret, I would say. You will practice more, then you will be better over time. Okay, Jimmy. So uh, I think uh, that is a good lesson for the others also. Uh, that is how entrepreneurs should behave. So mm. you might not be as good as Jimmy, but then we need to learn since young. Uh. Okay, another thing is um, now we talk a little bit about business model. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you come up with 24 angels, I believe uh, if you follow Blue Ocean strategies, that is definitely in Blue Oceans. Not many people have done it. I think uh, you could be one of the pioneers in Malaysia. But then uh, subsequently to face the reality of business, uh, you move back to a more traditional business, which is a little bit of red oceans. And a lot of players are already in. But surprisingly, okay, since you are sharing your price over here, lah, since you are sharing your price over here, so we can, we, can, we can zoom in a little bit on your pricing. It seems to me that this is um, not a price that is affordable by the mass market. Mm. So uh, if you can share with us a little bit on now, what, what, what made you to decide to price it in this way instead of maybe if you meet a lot of people that could even tell you that, hey, Jimmy, this is too expensive. Lah. No, why not you lower down the price, you put two more bits there, and etc. Mm, yeah, okay, good. So, uh, because Dr. Ong is from Faculty of Business, right, Dr. Ong? Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. So, that's why uh, you will ask such a question because it's, everything is about business model, your customer segment, and your target market. Yeah? So, target market and customer segment, if you learn in your business school, you really need to understand your target market, right? So uh, why I charge so high is because, um, but you will be surprised that with this amount of uh, the, 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 the charges, we don't face much problem to sell this service, you know? Like for example, iPhone, is it, is it expensive? But you will be surprised. Everybody is crazy for it. People want to, loan money to buy iPhone. Why? Because of value. Because the value and the perception iPhone is giving, right? It's a social status, it's the innovation by iPhone, and price doesn't matter. People will craze for your product or services if you really give that value to it. And of course, your service or product cannot be targeting at everyone. You cannot sell your service to everyone unless you are selling things like salt, uh, 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 brass, uh, flour, uh, of course, these are the, the, the things that you sell to everyone, uh, but the margin is also low. So you must understand for our service is quite niche. So when your service is niche, you need to target your, you need to uh, identify your target segment. So we have identified that our customers shall be from the upper middle class where they appreciate the SOPs that we have developed. They are more highly educated. They are either business people or upper management class where they don't feel uh, 3,000, 9, 4,000, 5, 5,000 per month is a problem to them. And we can give a really good service to them. We service them uh, uh, very well. We even dedicate a customer relationship officer to, uh, to communicate with them in a, in a WhatsApp group because they need somebody to talk to when uh, they, they want to ask questions about their parents. So compared to other nursing homes, they don't really uh, hire a customer relationship officer to, to deal with patients, you know. So we spend this money to hire a customer relationship officer to give a very good service. And if you look at our target customers, so these are the very targeted customers that we are looking at. Post-surgery, bedridden, cancer, stroke, Alzheimer. So these one, two, three, four, five, five segments of customers, they are very ill. They are very, very sick. They have a lot of medication uh, needed to be, to be taken care of and they need uh, huge attention. 
So these people, they wouldn't want to go to a cheap nursing home charging 2000, 2005, and in the end, they get poor service and they might get even serious illness. So when they come to us, they, they look at the whole facilities, the, 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 the services rendered, the process, they are confident we can give a good service. They can pay 4,000 above. We have clients paying up to 8,000 per month and they are still with us today. Why? Because they are not looking at the money. They are looking at how you can treat us well uh, because they are so sick and a lot of complications for us to, to help. And um, so target customer market size for every business is the same. You need to identify yourself, right? Either you want to be, you, you want to target the low end market or the high end market or the middle class, right? But we have choose to target the high end market because we want to take care of a brand, right? We want Minty Green to be a brand everybody respect and it's a five star brand that we can bring abroad if there's a chance. So uh, we, we, we want to give high service, but of course with high service, we need to charge more. Yes, so Dr. O, I, I hope I answer your question. Okay, Jimmy, yeah, obviously. Um, another question, sorry, uh, I take a lot of time to ask questions. Mm. Okay, uh, will you see 24 Angels as the future and Mitty Greens as, as the current? Uh, 24 Angels is, um, both brands will grow together because uh, with Minty Greens outlets getting more and more, then we will have the economy of scale to, to, um, to give home care services uh, to more locations. Because 24 Angels have home care is mobile. They, they, they go everywhere. But we need more locations to station the, the, the caregivers. Yeah, we, we even send caregivers to uh, other states like Guantan, Seremban. But the problem is all the caregivers is from KL. So if we have more outlets of Mindy Green in the whole uh, West Malaysia, then we, we, have, we don't have much problem of logistic issue. So these two brands have to grow together. And, um, but of course, in three to five years time, you will see Mindy Green probably grow faster with the more outlets uh, coming up because uh, the, the market awareness is already there. People know where to find the service when they need uh, a nursing home. 24 Angel home, home Care, a lot of market education still need to be done. But we don't have the amount of money to burn to, to do market education. Unlike Grab, Grab they, they have a lot of money to do uh, market education. They tell the people what is this app about and you can just uh, click the app and book, uh, book taxi and, and book uh, food and so on. So it's the, the money to do market education, I will let others to do it instead of me doing it. Hi, Jimmy. Um, Albert here. So, do you see any possibility that you want to, um, or, or you have, you, you, it has uh, crossed your thought that you want to explore into the idea of franchising? Uh, franchising. Okay. Franchising, we, 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 we had some people approach us before. Um, from what I see from all the competitors around, we, at this juncture is not uh it's not doable because our service is still very human touch and unlike mcdonald's and kfc all their products is coming out from a central kitchen right? so they they can control their their food you know so uh the food quality they can control but for us service we want to have a better control of the service because it's a human touch thing so if we do franchise there's a high possibility the, the standards of care is being uh, uh, up, down, up, down, and it's not consistent across the outlets. It will affect our brand, given that our customers, they are high-end market. So uh, it's a no for us to do franchise within these three to five years, and we are happy that we can open the outlets uh, on our own. Okay. Anyone have any other okay. questions? Um, my last question, I promise. Last question. Okay, as a very young 
I think I think if you look at your industry lah, most likely you are the youngest among mm. all the bosses. So mm. as a very young man in this a uh, very old industry, so what what is your ultimate goals or what is your ultimate visions of your company? The the ultimate vision because I I have great passion and interest in this industry. Uh, I'm lucky that I have found. Uh, this industry and this is my fifth year in this industry since 2017, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, yeah, this is my fifth year. So I will continue to uh, uh, put put my time into this industry and this is my lifetime career. And I, I have an aspiration to bring this brand to uh, to overseas, to other countries, so that we can duplicate the business model uh, in other countries. Yeah, we... we we wouldn't want to do other business already because this is our our core strength and we understand the business well and we we see aging population as a global issue it's a global business by its nature yeah so our vision is to become a, a global brand thank you okay thank you okay there's a question from sujet are you looking to make your service accessible okay. to thanks for all the questions Uh, wait, uh, it's a question from Sun Kiat. Are you looking to make your service accessible to everyone? Let's say provide lesser service but with affordable price for average family in the future. I get you need to I get you need to net more profit because you're starting up. But are you looking to like mobilize the healthcare market in the future? The question is to repeat. Are you looking to make your service accessible to everyone? Let's say provide lesser service but with affordable price for average family in the future. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, I partly answered that question just now, but I can repeat. I, as I said, if we need to target our, if we need to change the, the another market segment, right? If we want to target the 3,000 per month of target customers, then we have to rebrand we cannot use Minty Green, the brand, to, to reach out to these customers because it will be confusing. It's just like uh, Four Seasons and uh, uh, Oyo Hotel. You you cannot expect Oyo Hotel to target Four Seasons customer one because Four Seasons, they are doing premium customers. So it's not possible. But of course, our company, we can create another brand. It's either MG Budget, you know, Minty Green Budget, to cater for a 3,000 or 2,005 clients and we give a, a not a average service, I would say, average service. That's the way moving forward. But now our market is still very new and the super normal profit is still there within this two to three years time. Right? So the super normal profit uh, uh, situation now, we haven't reached the the situation where the market is too saturated where you need to go to the to the mass market yet we don't need to go to the mass market yet so uh if, if we just focus in doing premium market uh we, we have more capital to expand eventually when the market is saturated then only we can go for a uh, budget clients is still uh have a lot of time to do that Okay, what he's saying is, is actually like in the far, far future because he did mention, I get you need to uh, net in more profit because you're a startup, right? But you're looking, are you looking to like monopolize the healthcare market in the future? That's one of his questions as well. Like in the far, far future. Are you uh, planning such? I have great interest in healthcare business. Uh, that's why I'm in this industry. Uh, Rehabilitation hospital is something that we are planning to do after uh, after a while. You know, rehabilitation hospital is very close to what we are doing now, because rehabilitation hospital they also do uh, long term care and daycare and all these services. Yeah, so rehab hospital we can see some is coming up already. Yeah, but it's never too late. Yeah, it's never too late. Uh, that is our plan, but we can't monopolize the whole industry. It's, it's difficult because there are bigger boys in the town who can uh, uh, set up anytime they want. So 
everyone can set up hospital anytime they want actually because building a hardware facility is always uh, not too difficult you can build i also can build but the most important thing is the team the sop and the service software is always the hardest in the service industry right you can build four season but your service is a, a tuned hotel service level then you are in a deep problem you are in big trouble yeah, agreed. Okay, Shahzui Alif asking another question here. Comparing with 24 Angel and other old folk home, why people need to choose 24 Angel compared with other old folks home, which is free maybe? I'm not sure if old folks home is free. I think old folks home generally you still have to pay a nominal fee, right? The ones out there, I'm not very sure as well. Okay, there are many old folks home out there is sponsored by NGO or donations, but you need to know their service is kind of poor. Uh, it's definitely the last resort for those who can afford it. Yeah. And for our customers, uh, they are all uh, doing well people. You know? I mean, there are people who are doing well and their children want them to come to our center because of medications and uh, they love their parents a lot. But if you say old folks home sponsored by NGO and donations, uh, it's either their, their financial background is not strong or their children don't want to sponsor them to a private setup. So they have to resort to old folks home, which is uh, uh, has very poor service. Because those old folks home is just like a shelter. They can't really uh, give you much medication, uh, uh, attention, or medical services for you to uh, to heal and recover. So that's the difference between a single and old folks home. So why they somebody choose twenty four angels is because they want a one one to one care at their comfort home. They don't want to come out from their house. They prefer to recover and rest in their home. So that's where uh, the the elite groups of society they are willing to pay five thousand and above just to get a caregiver come to their house. Yeah, it's a niche market. And as long as you are able to target this market segment, you will get your customers. Right. Okay, 